Glory to God this morning. Hallelujah. There's Courtney. Wait a minute. There's Caleb. Oh, wow. I am so thankful that they are here with me. <laughs> had a blessing. <laughs> so glory to God. I just wanted them to be here and say Thanksgiving. So let me hear what you guys say. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. <laughs> what a blessing. Amen. Amen. So thank you guys for joining us this day. Amen. For it is something to be thankful for. And I'm grateful for that. So glory to God. So saints, we've got a powerful word for you. I think that you're going to really be blessed by this day because we are thankful to God for everything that he's doing for us. So let us pray quickly. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just give you all praise, all thanks, and we lift you up because of these beautiful children and these beautiful families that are we are so much connected with. And God, we just thank you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Amen. All right. Thank you, sweethearts. Okay, so you can go take your place. And granddaddy's going to see what the Lord says. Amen. So say goodbye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Well, glory to God, saints. I am so excited as always. You know, that's me. Most excited one. Hallelujah. And ready to come to God to give him praise and thanksgiving. So glory to God again. And I just, I'm so thankful for what he's doing. So I want to go ahead and get in the word. I think this is, this word is so powerful this morning because it really hits home in terms of where we're at, what we're doing and why Thanksgiving and the meaning of Thanksgiving and what it's so much about. So if you will allow me to enter into your homes or abode, tell a friend or whatever needs to be done this morning, I just want to be able to give God thanks. So the title of this message this morning is thankful. The thankful family, how to be a thankful family. Amen. So the first thing we want to say is love your kin. <laughs> it's simple, isn't it? Love your kin. Amen. Love your kin folks. <laughs> For some of you that, you know, couldn't really get that. So the key is to love your family. Now, notice that, you know, you know, we have way with family members. That's that's OK. But we are to love them anyway, because God says we are to love one another. And so we are to love our family. This is an important thing. So we love our family and all other people because they are your great family. And all of you are the children of the Lord. If you are surrounded by faithful people. Here's the key. They are your brothers, your sisters, and your children of the same heavenly father. Being therefore thankful for all people who surround you and your response to the love of the Lord. Notice our spiritual family in most cases are the most important because they love the Lord. So we are all should be in the family of God. When you're in family of the Lord, of Jesus Christ, then you're flowing in love. And that love penetrates and permeates throughout the family. You know, you have to love people back into the fold, don't we? We have to forgive them and love them and bring them back in the fold. Oh, somebody. What does the Bible say then? scripturally about being thankful. Esra, Esra, that's E-Z-R-A, Esra, chapter three, verse 11 says, with praise and thanksgiving, with praise and thanksgiving, they sing unto the Lord, with praise and thanksgiving. And then Psalm seven and 17 says, I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness. We're still in the midst of thanking God for what he's done. Yeah, we've had food. Some of us got some wonderful food left over. And so we should continually to be thankful. Some of, our, some of us has family members that are still with us. Amen. And when I say still with us, I mean they haven't gone on. They're still with us. Amen. Staying with us. Whatever the case may be, we should be thankful for that. Psalms 9, 1 says that this way, I will give thanks then. I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. God knows, hallelujah, how to scripturally tell us to be thankful. The key is what then 
What then we should say, does the Bible say about the family unit? So then therefore the family unit and Psalms 133 verse one talks about it like this. How good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity? There it is. We know it's hard with some of the way with family members, but we've got to love them anyway. We've got to pray for them. Amen. Because as Jesus prayed for us. Amen. So then how good and pleasant is it when God's people live together in unity? Proverbs 6 and 20 breaks it down like this. My son, keep your father's commandment. And do not forsake your mother's teaching. Colossians 3 and 20 talks about it like this. Children, always obey your parents, for this is pleasing to the Lord. See, when we do these kinds of things, it is showing God that we understand, hallelujah, what the Bible is saying about family and the unity of family. We know that God's family is made up. And, and set around the spirit, the spirit of unity circles, oh, God's family. You have the Godhead, uh, you have Jesus and the Holy Ghost, and yet there is never any dissension. There's never any disagreement. When God says something, it is. Oh, isn't that good? Hallelujah. Isn't, don't, isn't it good to have a God that is decisive? Oh, somebody. Isn't it as good that God that has no doubt and no disbelief? Is it good to have somebody you can go to that is a guarantee? Oh, somebody that's worth being thankful for this morning. I'm telling you the truth. I know God is moving. Look what God says and look at his view of our family. Look what he says here. He says the family is the foundational institution of society ordained by God. We understand that. Notice, let me repeat that again. The family is the foundational institution of the society ordained by God. Amen. So we understand that and we know this to be true. So God, I want you to meditate. Oh, give thanks to God. Hallelujah. We love the Lord. Again, let me emphasize. What is God's view of the family? The family is the foundational institution of society ordained by God. It is It is constituted by marriage and it's composed of persons related to one another by marriage notice by marriage blood blood or adoption the family is a fundamental institution of human society here is a good family prayer that we should have this is a good family prayer so if there was ever any doubt as to how to pray for your family listen to this this is a prayer for you. This is one that you can use to bring about unity, charity, oh somebody, and forgiveness in your family. Listen to this prayer. Dear God, give us wisdom to make the best choice for our family. Give us grace to trust in you, even when we don't see immediate answers. Isn't that good? Give us hope then to carry on in a in spite of the circumstances around us. We thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. Isn't that good? Isn't that so good? One of the best ways to thank God is this. Tell other people about God. That's one of the best ways to thank God. For instance, if someone if someone says to you, your home is beautiful, you might say, thank you. <laughs> God has really blessed my life, and I am very grateful to him. Notice you turned it around. You took the thank you that the individual or the compliment that they gave you and then gave it to God. Amen. That's being thankful. You've, you've actually killed two birds with one stone. That is so wonderful. If they ask you more about your faith in God, you might invite them to come to church. Oh, somebody. With you so that they can learn about God generously as well and his generosity, oh, somebody. So we give God thanks, we praise him, and we love him. We need to understand the importance of family. We need to understand how important this is. Family is the center of God's plan for the happiness and progress of his children. The Holy Bible teaches that God established families for every, for everything. 
He established family in the very beginning. We begin to understand a little bit about family. We know Adam and Eve started a family. This is, was the beginning of family. God always intended for families to be the key. Notice here, the enemy will try to destroy families. That's his job, to break it up. Memory came in the garden to break up Adam and Eve. So he's always been there to destroy the family. He's always trying to take out the head of the family. Whether the head is the man of God in the family, and as it should be, but if there's no man in the family, then woman of God, you must take on the responsibility. And so God sends the man of God, hallelujah, to be the head of your family. Amen. Notice I said when God sends him, not somebody that you choose or you want to pick up. Hallelujah. Because that could not be the head. Let God send the head of the family to you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Now. Notice here, it shows us, it shows us we are to understand the importance of family. Family is the center of God's plan for the happiness and progress of his children. We are all his children. The Holy Bible teaches that God established families from the very beginning. And it shows us many examples of strong families. It also teaches us how to have a loving family family, how to have a loving and happy family. Why? Again, I tell you, why is the family so important? The key to that is family is the single most important influence in a child's life. It's the unity. It's what the mother and father teaches. From their first moment of life, Children depend on parents and family to protect them and provoke them to do right and to provide for their needs. They are a child, a child, and you are a child's first teachers. And you are to act accordingly and act as a role model and how to act and how to experience the world around them. You are their teachers. In most cases, parents, you are their heroes. What, what keeps our family close to God? This is really on you. What keeps our family then close to God? Read God's word together. Spend time teaching the word of God to your children. Spend time even discipline them in a perfect way showing them the right way to go, letting them know that God chastised those whom he loves, letting them know the importance of God, letting them know the importance, the importance of the word of God. So read God's word together. When you read the scriptures as a family, you will invite God's spirit to be in your family. You will invite, you will invite God's spirit to be in your home. Even if you only read one verse together each morning, study the scriptures will help your family draw closer to God. Notice this is a key to the closeness of God in reference to the family. Be thankful in all of these things. Jeremiah, Jeremiah 9 and 9 and 11 says this. For I know the plans I have for you, declared the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and future. God knows this, and he wants you to have this when you become the family of God. I love it when God lets us know how much he truly loves us when we, are, when we take responsibility of the family. He truly does. How then do we serve God? How do we serve God with our families? Here's a few ways. Here's a few ways that I want to share with you in terms of serving God through serving others. Again, the question, how do I serve God with my family? By serving God through serving others. 
Serve God through your family. Give tithes and offerings. Notice, that's scriptural, but it's a way. It's a way to give God thanks through your family. It's a way to cause your family to be blessed. Volunteer and your community. Home and visiting teaching. Donate clothing or other goods. Be a friend, amen. Serve God by serving children or somebody. By showing them love and teaching them things. Mourn with those that mourn. Oh, somebody. Again, I say to you, in closing, why the family is so important to God. And again, I say to you, family is the single most important influence in a child's life. Family. From the very moment that child's life begins, children depends on their parents and families to protect them and to provide for their needs. They, they are a child's first teacher and act as the role model in how to act and how to experience the world around them. This is why we must teach them. This is why prayer must be in the home. We must train the child up the way he or she should go by showing them love and discipline as to how they are to treat and love the Lord of God. Amen. To be blessed. Oh, saints of God, thank you today for allowing us to come into your thankful home. Thank you today for allowing us to be a blessing to you. I trust that this short word has been a blessing to you this morning because I didn't want to keep you long, but I wanted to give you something so that you know that this season truly is about family and about thanksgiving and about thankfulness with God. We love you. We appreciate you so much and be thankful to God. Amen. And I'm going to ask, hallelujah.